All right, I need your attention, please. Okay, if, if you need to evaluate your position in the room right now and decide if it's a good spot, because i gotta, I got to cover some stuff today. And I, I'm here, by the way. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay, next, so do that. If you need to move, move now. Okay, put away all phones and devices. Got to be, you know, totally put away. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now from yesterday, here's my question to you. Review. Okay, if I've got a matrix equation like this, right, if we want to solve a matrix equation for a variable matrix, so in this case we're going to solve for the we're going to solve for matrix X, which is the unknown matrix. That's what we want to find. How do we do that? Now with normal, before you answer, with normal real numbers, we would just divide both sides by A. But we can't, there's really no way that you can exactly divide matrices, but we had an operation that we did that was equivalent to that. What was it? Um, we times it by, just make it the X. Times it by, by one over two. Okay, by, by what? How do we, okay, it looked like a reciprocal. But it's not truly a reciprocal. It's the inverse. There we go. Good. 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 That's what you mean, right? Yes. No, that's not. Well, I know that's what you guys meant. That's not Okay, that's what we do. Now, our, the way we, we get rid of that matrix A to isolate matrix X, our technique for sort of dividing a matrix away like this is to multiply by its inverse from the left. Okay, so if we do that, if I multiply A inverse times A on the left side of this equation, that just becomes what? Anytime I multiply two inverse matrices together, I always get, I'm going to get the X by itself, but what does that turn into? Well, say it again? Zero. Not, well, they're, they're going to cancel each other out, but remember what the what the uh, result of that was. If we multiply two inverses together, we got some kind of matrix that looked like this, for example. Yeah, the identity matrix, right? That's our matrix equivalent of the number one. Okay. So whenever we multiply an inverse matrix times a matrix, you know, two inverse, and, and by the way, a inverse is the inverse of A, but the opposite is also true. These two matrices are inverses of each other. When you multiply inverses together, inverse matrices together, you just get I, which is the identity matrix, the equivalent of one. So then we get Ix equals A inverse times B, and I times any matrix is what? Um, what? Same as X. Yeah, X. Right, that's like multiplying one by something. That's the identity matrix, so this is just X. So that's how we do it, right? That's the way we isolate X. We can just jump, we don't have to go through that whole process. We can just do this. We can go straight from our original problem, AX equals B down to that solution. What we always know we're going to do to get x by itself is multiply both sides by the inverse of a from the left. And so that's what we're going to end up with on the b side of that equation, a inverse times b, right? OK, we did a couple examples of that yesterday. Now, what I want to do today, uh, I want to look at an example where we're going to solve a linear system. The whole point is this. I gave you some minor applications of matrix stuff. We used determinants to uh, solve for the area of a triangle. We did some some decoding and encoding secret message stuff, but that's you know minor. Here's what we really want to do. We want to take a linear system. Let me get one. Oh, where'd it go? Yeah. 
Okay, so Okay, now I, I just I, well, I want to take the time to put the right colors in here so it's easier to see what we're going to do with this. Yes? Question? No? Okay, so, so here's we got this linear system now. Instead of, instead of just, just doing a small linear system with just x's and y's like we've done, now we're going to move up to the big daddies here. We're going to have three by three linear systems with three variables and four by four linear systems and five by five linear systems. But we'll start with a three by three linear system. If we want to solve this, we don't have the same techniques we had before available. Now, when we were dealing with little guys, with X's and Y's only, graphically, we had a great trick. We could just you know, uh, graph the two lines on the calculator, find the intersection, just second calc, five, enter, 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 right? And it gave it to us. It was easy. Easiest way to do it. We had some algebraic methods. We could use substitution or linear combination also. But we don't have those same options available as easily anyway with larger systems like this. We can't graph them on our calculators because the graphs don't fit. Remember what the graph of a linear system actually looks like. The graph of a, of, of, excuse me, of a, of a linear equation with three variables. We'll come back and look at one here in a little bit, but you might recall we talked about this a week or two ago, and we said that it looked like a plane. Right? It looked like a plane in space instead of just a line in a plane. It's a plane in space. And so obviously our graphing calculators aren't going to be able to graph that. They graph two-dimensional things, not three-dimensional things. So we can't use the first trick. We can use some algebraic methods, but they're hard. <coughs> Going through and, and talking about the techniques of reducing a linear system just aren't really practical anymore. We don't do them. We don't do them because... They take a lot of time, and we can do it so much more easily with matrix methods and a calculator. And then we can move on and move and learn more stuff instead of being stuck on this for a long time. So how do we do this? Now, what we're going to do is, here's how we're going to use the matrix stuff. Imagine that we, I color-coded this for a reason. As long as you write the linear equations in standard form, so we're writing the, the terms involving the variables in alphabetical order, so the x term, then the y term, then the z term, etc. Uh, and then we put the constant that doesn't have a variable on the other side of the equal sign. That's standard form. And if we always do that, notice that we're going to get this regular array of stuff going on. The coefficients are all written in red. Now, I've got a negative sign up here in a couple of places, but doesn't that really just mean a coefficient of negative 1? Right? So, so if what if I pull all nine of those coefficients out, and I'm going to put them, being as they're arranged in a regular order, that looks like matrix stuff. I'm going to put those into a matrix. So here's my matrix. Top row is just negative 1, 2, negative 3. Middle row would be 2, negative 5, positive 4 positive 5, positive 4, negative 1. We're going to call that the coefficient matrix. And we usually just label that as matrix 
matrix A. Okay, so now, how are we going to join the coefficients to the variables? How many variables do you see there are involved in this system? Three, in order x, y, and z, right? Now, what are the dimensions of our coefficient matrix? What are the dimensions of that matrix? Three by three. three, by three. Okay, so if I want to multiply a three by three by another matrix that's going to include those three variables, there's really only two ways I can put those three variables into a matrix. Either it could be a horizontal row matrix or a vertical column matrix. It's either going to be a three by one or a one by three. Well, which one of those two is going to multiply with our three by three? Three by one. Good. We need it to be a three by one so the inside numbers match up. Right? Now, a three by one is a column matrix. That's a single column, three rows and one column. So here's what it's going to look like. Right? And that's what we call the variable matrix. And we're going to call it capital X, just like we did before in the examples we looked at yesterday. And we just looked at a few minutes ago. Okay, so. Now, does it make sense that the product of those two matrices is going to give us back all this stuff up here? Okay, look, I'm going to show you that it does. It may not look that way at first, but it really does. If we were to turn that into a single matrix, now what happens if we multiply this coefficient matrix times this variable matrix? Remember how we do that. We multiply, we superimpose the rows of the first matrix with the columns of the second one, right? So if we do that, if we multiply first part of the first row times first part of the first column, I'm going to get negative 1x plus 2y plus negative 3z. Well, hey, that's that first row, isn't it? All right? If I move down to the second row, 2 times x plus negative 5 times y plus 4 times z. Well, there's the second row, right? Okay. And 5x plus 4y plus negative 1z, there's the third row. So you can see there that what we've done really does make sense. We've just broken it apart into two separate things, though. Instead of being jumbled up into one big system, we got the coefficients pulled out separate from the variables. Okay, on the other side, we've still just got our, our column matrix now that's going to look like this, negative 3, 13, 5, right? And we call that the constant matrix, B. And that, of course, is a 3 by 1. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1 equals a 3 by 1. Right? So look what we've done. If we multiply these out, this times this gave us the first row. So really, all we've said is that the first row of that product is equal to negative 3, right? The second row times the first column gives us this stuff we already showed. And that would be the row 2, column 1 entry of the matrix. So all that stuff is equal to that, right? That's what our system was telling us before we even did any matrix stuff. And then finally, Row 3 times column 1 must correspond to row 3, column 1 of our, our answer on the other side. So this stuff combining with this stuff was right there. Don't wind up with that, right? Okay, make sense? Okay, now, how is that helpful? Well, once we've got this set up, and you know, it took a while to describe this, but what do we do? Nothing hard. I mean, that's, it's pretty simple stuff to move from this system up here without any brackets. So let me actually get rid of these. We don't need them. To just write that as a product of matrices. We're just going to pull the coefficients out into the coefficient matrix. 
the variables in order become the variable matrix, and then the constants become the constant matrix. And we end up with something like that, which we just had in our last example. What? We just did this. You just told me a little bit ago that when I see a matrix equation like this, A times X equals B, the solution is X equals A inverse times B. That's how we isolated X, right? Same game here. If I want to solve for the variables, which are in my variable matrix, x oops, is just going to be equal to the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. See? So our calculator is going to do this whole thing for us. Now let's do an example. All right. Okay, let's do an example. Uh, shoot. Okay, so let's do. Oh. Let's do, well, try, we'll do a big one. Try, try this guy. Solve that linear system using matrices. So what's the coefficient matrix A going to look like for this one? going to look like well you tell me what's the first row of the coefficient matrix one right coefficient is z next row constant matrix. We're just going to put those in our calculator. That's all we do. Size do we want the coefficient matrix three to be? Three by three. Okay, and then I'll just put in all the entries two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, does that look good for the coefficient matrix? Okay. Second matrix, edit B. B is going to be this guy over here, right? Negative 1, 1, negative 2. So B is going to be a 3 by 1. And negative 1, 1, negative 2. Okay. Now what? Okay, quit. And then you go second matrix. Matrix. We're going to call it A. And then you do X to the negative first. Invert it. Okay. Isn't that all we do? Yes. If we want to isolate the matrix X, which is the one we want to, that's the variable matrix, I just multiply A inverse, the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix every time. And now if I hit enter, look what it tells me. Now 
Now, what's that mean? What's that mean? This is... Okay, this is just what we've got here. This is just equal to x. That's what we solved for, right? So what's x? What's y? What's z? You got it. Okay. Oops. And we can. And so we write the answer as an ordered triple. 2, negative 1, negative 2. Yes, sir? You says error? It says error. This is what? It broke it? Broke it? It's a dollar. Right, it's got to be the coefficient matrix. <laughs> coefficient matrix, by the way, now it's always going to be square, right? Because we're always going to have as many variables in a linear system as we have equations. It takes three equations to solve for three unknowns. So it should have been 2, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1. Okay. All right, let's try one more of those. Try that one. Uh, you, it's, you'll see. It's, it's no big deal. Okay, try that one. Try that one. Yeah. Yep. In fact, you have to put a zero there. Okay. Because remember, we have to put in three coefficients for each row in the coefficient matrix. So okay. if there's one missing, there you go. It's got to be a zero. Okay. Can we get it? Okay, did you get this for your answer? Let's see here. Not done? Did you get that? Okay. Okay. 
So the coefficient matrix would just be negative 1, 3, 5, 2, 1, 0, negative 9, negative 8, negative 4. That's A. What's B? Yeah, it's a 3 by 1, negative 15, 1, 12. A inverse times B gives us that. Okay, now... Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want this. Okay, try that one. And there's a reason. I, I, you've had enough practice, but something weird's going to happen with this one. So, well, you'll see. Try this one. Something weird's going to happen. Things are going to blow up. Okay, everybody agree that's the coefficient matrix? Yeah. Right? Okay, so now if we try this, you guys are ahead of me, I think, so but everybody got this, right? When I invert matrix A and multiply from you know from the left, multiply that from the left over B. Ah, error. Uh -oh. Singular matrix. What's that mean? Okay. Now think back for a second here. Think back to what happened with our normal, our small linear systems, two by two linear systems. Okay, when we graphed those either on our calculators or when we when we did those analytically by substitution or linear combination, you know, usually kind of the normal result was we got back an ordered pair, which meant the point of intersection of the two lines, right? Sometimes that didn't happen though. Sometimes when we solved the linear system analytically, we got something like an answer that said zero equals zero. What did we interpret that to mean? If, if, if we solved, if, if we did a linear, you know, we did the algebra, we did this the algebraic method, and we got an answer that said five equals five, or zero equals zero, or some true statement. Okay, yeah, it meant infinitely many solutions, which corresponded, what was going on with the graphs of the lines there? Uh, they lined up, right? The two lines were superimposed on top of each other, right? Okay, what happened? Now, you everybody with me here? This is this is a big concept. If if we did the algebra and we got an answer that was false, like zero equals four, how did we interpret that? No solutions. And what was going on with the line? Okay, they were parallel. All right. Now we got to review just real quick. Let's take this. Let's take this top. Equation, just this guy right here. And let's do a little sketch of this, a three dimensional sketch to see what's going on with that. Remember, it's a plane. And the way we did this, this should ring a bell. Remember, we, we drew a three dimensional coordinate system that came out of the board and went into the board, and we just called it x, y axes, and now the z axis, which was perpendicular to the x, y plane. And if we wanted to get a feel for what this graph looked like, we used our cover-up method. And we wanted to find the x, y, and z intercepts. Right? So if I let y and z equal 0, I can solve for the x-intercept value, which is 2. Right? Yep. So the x-intercept is at 2. The y-intercept is at 2 in this case. And the z-intercept, in this case, is at 2, right? And then what we did was we just 
connected all those, right, with something kind of like, you know, like this. With like a, a sheet of rubber or something, right? We're pinning it to those three places. And then if we just extended that flat sheet of rubber forever, it would make the plane. Remember that stuff? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, the point being, even if you don't, well, that's how it works. Each of these represents a, uh, an infinite plane, okay? So now, normally what happens when we solve a linear system is something like this. Normally, it would be like intersecting, say, the plane of the wall with the plane of the ceiling with maybe the plane of the back wall. You know, where would all three of those planes intersect? Right up there, right? They intersect at what kind of geometric thing? And, well, I mean, what is that? Is it a line? Is it a, it's a point, right? They intersect at a point in space. And so to identify that point, we have to, we have to give it an x, y, and z coordinate so we get an order triple. So when we get answers like the last two examples you guys did, you intersected three planes, and you got a value for x, a value for y, and a value for z. So that's just telling us where in space, sideways, up and down, and forward and backward, where in space did the three planes intersect? Now this time, something different happened. This time we got something happening where there was, turns out this one was no solution. This would be like saying we're going to take the plane of the ceiling and the floor and the plane of this desk right here, where all three planes are parallel. Okay, Or maybe two of them are parallel and the other one's not. Say we took the plane of the ceiling and the floor and that wall. Where do all three of those intersect? Nowhere. Nowhere. Right? There's no solution because all three planes don't intersect anywhere. Okay? Now, that looks an awful lot like if we do this one, or I could give you another example. And we don't even have to do it, but I'm just going to tell you what's going to happen. Take this example. If I were to, if we were to put this into our calculator and do the same stuff we just did, it's also going to say error singular matrix. But I promise you something very different is going on here. This is an example where, say, we've got something like the plane of the ceiling, the plane of the wall, and maybe another plane that's going like this, right? That's the extension of this envelope. Right? It's going to cut through that same crack up there between the ceiling and the wall at a different angle. Okay. Now, where are all three of these planes going to intersect? Is it a single point? Yes. No. <laughs> it's, it's that line, right? They're all going to join up at that one line up there. And so this is an example where there would be an infinite number of answers, right? But our calculators didn't distinguish between the two. It gave us the same answer, which was error, singular matrix, and they're very different things. we got to know how to distinguish between the two. That's the weakness of this method. But I got it. There's a, there's a way to fix it. There's a way to fix it. And how many of you have done this in other classes, like in chemistry before? Anybody? You've done, haven't you solved linear systems with? Yeah. You've probably done this? Yeah. Okay. In chemistry, it's never going to be a problem because you're always going to get an answer. But a lot of times, you'll get situations like this where there is no single answer. And so this method has got a flaw. Here's what we want to do instead. We're going to we'll do an example with this matrix. I can find my pen. What am I going to do with my pen? I'm paralyzed without my pen. <laughs> I just had it. What did I set it down? Maybe in the box. Is it in the box? No. Oh, yeah, it is. Thank you. It is. There we go. Okay. Okay, here's what you do. Now, we don't have much time, so we got to get through this. Everybody, calculators out. Focus up here. 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna go to the matrix screen like before. We're gonna edit matrix A, but we're gonna do something instead of drawing two separate matrices, one for the coefficients and one for the constants, we're gonna build one augmented matrix is what it's called. Not that we really even care what it's called. So ours is gonna look like this. We're going to input the coefficients, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 1, and the constants. Okay, This is actually even easier than what you just did. You're not going to have to do the, the method I just showed you. You probably just always do this now instead. Same idea, just easier. So if I want to build this one big matrix with both the, the coefficients and the constants, how would I... 3 by 4. Okay, I'm going to make it a 3 by 4. Good. Oh, you know what I want to do first? What makes more sense? Here, let me do one thing. Let me... Hang on. Hang on, sorry. I know this is disorganized, but this will be better for you, I promise. I just thought of this. Okay, this guy. We'll do this one. Perfect. We will. We'll get to that also. But first do this one. So we're going to put this one into a 3 by 4 matrix. Hey, I, I, I'm going to ask it one more time. I want everybody to shut up and listen. If you're talking, don't do it. I keep hearing the same voices, and I'm getting a little ticked about it. So we want to make this a 3 by 4. What is the first row going to be if I include all four? 2, 3, 1, negative 1. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do this one first. Uh, trust me, this will be better. So 2, 3, 1, negative 1, right? matrix that includes the whole shebang. Now we're going to quit and we're going to go to second matrix to get to the matrix screen. Scoot over to the math menu and we're going to go all the way down to option B. And you can just hit alpha B if you want to just skip down there. Yeah, RREF. What that stands for is reduced row echelon form, but we don't care right now. What it's going to do is it's good, the calculator is going to perform all the little matrix magic row operations and it's going to turn this into an answer that's going to distinguish between a single answer, no solutions, or many solutions. So now I, I hit that button or I, I choose that option, now I've got, to, I've got to input matrix A, I've got to call it matrix A. So I want to do RREF on matrix A, close the parentheses, and hit enter. Now look what it did. Okay, look what it did here. It gave me back, this is important, what it, it gave me back a matrix that represents all of the answers. So what does this first row mean? It's telling me 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 2. In other words, it's just telling me... Exactly. It's just telling me x equals 2. Right? Okay, so this one's just saying x equals 2. This row is telling me y equals negative 1. And this row is telling me z equals negative 2, just like it did before. Right? So here's how you can always recognize. Whenever you get, now notice that the, the square part of this matrix, whenever the first 3 by 3 square part, the coefficient part of it, is an identity matrix, then this column over here just represents my answers, just like before. But now let's go to the case that blew up previously. So try this. And this is it. Then we're done. Now try 
One more. Where was it? Oh, back there? No, where was it? I just can't. Oh, right there. There it is, right there. You're right. That one. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Try this one. Okay, second, matrix, edit, three by four. I don't think this is it. Well, this one will work, though. This one blew up for us. This was the first one that blew up. So I'll go one, 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 two. All right, I'm gonna see if okay, here it is. Here it is. We got it. Oh, I can get it. Now watch. If I go quit, then I'm gonna do Oh, look what it did. Oh, 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 hang on before you go. You got to see this. You got to see this. No one goes anywhere. So we're dead. Look at this. Oh, this first three by three part is not an identity matrix. Okay, so here's how you know. So that means weird. That means it's not a single answer. If we look at the bottom row, it says 0x plus 0y plus 0z. So in other words, 0 equals 1. That False is statement. Right. No solutions. Okay, if it had been many solutions, it would have said 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. okay. See? See? All right. Good deal. Yeah.